Check one, two. All right, check one, two. Hey. <laughs> I'm coughing. That's not good, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Kathy with a C. C, you, Kathy with a C. Oh, gosh. What's going on? I changed shirts. Literally changed this shirt like right before I hit go live <laughs> because I didn't want to wear the same shirt three days in a row because we're just chilling it's like hey you know <laughs> not leaving the house although I, I my starbucks is still open so i'm able to walk over to that and uh they uh you know you, you have to get it to go but it's all good <clears throat> so we were we've been talking about the caged method i'm going to talk about it some more you can always go back the videos are uh i i leave them up there so you can go back and review and they won't, it won't be like reviewing one of my <laughs> three hours live streams because I'm trying to keep it to 30 minutes of teaching here. And then I'll take, you know, do five or 10 minutes of just shooting the breeze. Uh, oh, yeah, my cat's asleep on our bed. So I know she's, isn't that funny? The animals have no idea what's going on. <laughs> They're just like, uh, the same, every day is the same. Hey, Pepper. I know a Pepper, actually. Pepper Campbell, the daughter of a good friend of mine. Just practiced 30 minutes. That's awesome. I, yeah, I, you know, I'm trying to find, I don't know where, where I put it somewhere back in one of my boxes. I may have thrown it, but I had, I didn't really do logs, but I had a routine, a practice routine. Um, and I've said this before in the past. Um, uh, I used to practice like almost eight hours every day from the age of 15 to the age of 35. I knew what I wanted to do for a living. And it was so frustrating because I couldn't get the work, but I just kept working towards that goal. And, you know, uh, as frustrating as these times the, the, this month is, um, I've been pretty busy. And um, so that's, that's been good. And, I, and I'm trying to be, stay dedicated to the YouTube thing. So um, the, uh, um, but the, 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 I work from home anyway. So when the order came in to, they were recommending it like last week, um, in California, um, uh, it didn't really affect my daily life much. And then when it came in last night is when the midnight, I think that's like really serious. Like everybody's got to stay home and any non-essential businesses can't have people in them and stuff. And that, that list of essential businesses is pretty big, but I, I can still work because I'm working from home. So um, I, I was working on, actually, I filmed um, a, uh, a video yesterday and everybody can hear me okay. I changed my mic to um, figure eight pattern. Okay, what that means is my understanding is that both sides of this mic here, the back of it here, and the front of it are getting sound, okay? And so, because uh, Pat, Patrick was telling me yesterday that he, it, he could hear my guitar, but it sounded like it was just acoustically. So now here's the electric sound. So I think you can hear that and you can hear me, right? You're hearing like a gainy sound, right? You probably don't hear those delays. They're pretty quiet. I don't like really loud delays usually, but okay, great. Awesome. Thank you, Diane. Okay. I would look at, okay. Let me, let me go up one notch on my preamp. Okay. Is that better? I don't want to blow people away. Okay. So, um, that, 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 and I can turn up my amp guitar a little bit, but I think I, I don't want too loud in here because it scares me. Um, okay. So let me let me get to the to the caged stuff that I was talking about. And again, I, you know, the caged method isn't necessarily something particularly for beginners, but the beauty of it is that it's the whole premise of it starts in a very beginner. Um, it starts in a very beginner place, which is five basic open chords: C, A, G, E, and D. Okay, and the reason. Um, the, the chords are in that order is because that's the order that 
the shapes appear on the neck. So if I start on A, the next one's going to be the, after A is going to be G, and then the E shape, and then the D shape, and then the C shape, and then back to the A shape. If I start on a G chord, the next shape is, is going to be the E, and the next shape is going to be the D, and the next shape is going to be the C, and then the next shape is going to be the A, and then the next shape would be the G. And so it, no matter where you start in the word caged, C-A-G-E-D, -C okay, no matter where you start in the word, that next letter is going to be the next shape up your neck. So it's real simple to remember that. And then that can kind of get you started because you already do that. So um, you already know those shapes. And um, so now if you don't know those shapes, let me just, because again, I know we have, I have a lot of beginners because my video, um, the seven tips for older beginners, which uh, you mentioned. Um, and, and, and literally probably still 60% of my views on YouTube come from that. I have 400 videos or something. Can someone look up how many videos I have? I don't even know how many videos I have up and I can't see where it says that on my channel, but someone look that up and tell me how many it says I have up. Um, and, uh, and yet <laughs> one video is generating 60% of my views. Hey, Michelle, um, 60% of my views and, um, and 60% of my income from YouTube. So, which I do make money from YouTube. 468, are you kidding me? I have 468 videos. Oh my gosh. Oh, and then, okay. So, okay, real, real quick, let me, let me try to stay on point because I, I get, uh, I, I'm i I'm Mr. Tangential. I go in every direction at once. And I didn't get any sleep last night because I was stressing. I'm sure you guys are all stressing too. Uh, it's tough, it's really tough. Uh, I don't want to go into it, but it's just, uh, it's just, it's very stressful. My daughter's here, but she's going to, she's going to have to fly home early tomorrow back to Ozark Christian college in Missouri. So that's a bummer. Cause I was hoping to have her around for a little longer. Um, yeah, I am a total squirrel. Look, <laughs> I'm totally a squirrel. Okay. So the shapes are the C shape. Okay. Starting with that one is C. Okay. So uh, nothing on the bottom string and then three, two, zero, one, zero. Okay. So X. Three two zero one zero. That's C. And this is one hand here. Okay. And then the next shape is A. Again, nothing on the bottom string. Open two two two. Open. All right. And um, and that's A. Obviously. And again, this is for for the beginners. But you know, you can see how I'm writing these out. Okay. G is. I'm playing G this way. With the four fingers. You don't have to. In fact. You could to play G with three fingers, keeping your first finger available. Um, we talked about this before too, about that's what we're doing. We're take we're visualizing these shapes up and down the neck, and it opens up both rhythmic and lead opportunities. Okay, I use the cage method to see chords for rhythm playing, and I use the cage method to to see regions for soloing. Each of those shapes has licks that really fit that shape. Okay, so here's the G. Um, and then E is next, so that's zero two two one zero zero. That's E. And the last one is D. And basically this. Oops. Um, okay, so those are the five shapes. Hey, no one, no one chatted in between those, so they're all like stacked up. That's perfect. Um, those are our five shapes. And what normally you could play all of those because they're all except for the G one. But if I did the other G one, which would be Two three zero 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 three. You could play that with three fingers. So if you can play all those chords with these three fingers and eliminate the first finger, okay. So then you can play. Now you've got the E shape or the E chord like this, and now you've got technically your nut here. You can be your your index finger can be the movable nut or capo, and you can just go up and down the, the right. And I've said this a thousand times, you know, when you learn one bar chord, you've learned technically 12. That's the beauty of guitar. Okay. The A shape, we move it up, put, you know, if I use three fingers and that's how I play A anyway, you play D like this, which is not normal, but you can move it up and I might use that shape. Now keep in mind, these are shapes to more for visualization than for actually playing. I don't play this D shape very, you know, this shape very often. If I played a G chord, I might play the C form. The C one is actually... Uh, kind of usable, actually, to be honest. I, I, I find myself using this one more and more, 
Um, even in pop writing, um, I find, you know, instead of going, like, instead of going to D this way, of course, now I've got all this gain on here, but you know what I'm saying. Um, I might play this D form uh, because I can have that E on top and I still have the third. See, when you play a D2 chord, you take off that second finger. So I'm playing this. There's no, it's just two fingers here. So this D, D2 is like this. Um, I don't have a third anymore. But if I play D, D like this, like a C form moved up and then put my first finger here and open up the first string, that's a D chord, but it's also got a, 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 a an E in it, but it has the third. Okay. So, um, but I might... In fact, I just did a session. Let me create a, a clean sound. You're going to, I think you're going to like this. And I'll, I'll do, use this as a teachable moment on the, um, uh, in fact, I even created a sound for it yesterday. So let me pull up this sound. Uh, but teachable moment for moving the shapes up and down the neck. Okay. But I'm going to pull out my African telly. And I talked about this before when, on my last video about the cheap guitar stuff. Uh, I'm a clean African telly. Boom. There it is. Okay. Let me. Let me uh, let me change guitars. And I, you're gonna dig this. This is so fun. Uh, you can do this, and it is one of the funnest things you'll do. Let's see, where's my? Set? Oh, I gotta turn on the channel. Hold on. Um, oh, it is on. At least it worked for my session yesterday. <laughs> Gosh. Ah. Well, that's not very loud though either. Hold on. Let me see. Okay, that's loud. Okay, so let's check and see if it works on this one. Yeah, it works on that one, so maybe it's just that this sound is not very loud. Let me turn it up. Yeah, let me just, let me just crank this up. Okay, sorry. All right, so you can hear that, right? Yeah, I want a clean sound. That's why I change sounds. Okay, so so what? In a, this is just a cheap Squire Telly. I think I paid eighty bucks for it. And part of the reason I I um I bought a cheap Squire wasn't just because it was cheap, but because in my head I was thinking to get more legitimate African sound. I would. I'm assuming that they don't have a lot of money, and they uh, an, uh, an you know, American Fender Stratocaster or Telecaster would be very, very expensive in Africa. I know even in England, when I was in London, vintage guitars are so much more there than even here. Um, and so uh, I can imagine what like a, even a really nice Strat, American Standard Strat would cost in in like Kenya. Um, but I read an article in Guitar Player Magazine a million years ago, and it was talking about the the, the um, African tuning. And I went, what the heck? And I read the article and I go, oh, I need to get a guitar for that. And so what it is, all it is, it's you can even keep all your strings on there. It's basically just standard tuning, standard strings. The only thing is the D string, the fourth string, you take it off and you go get another E string, one of these, like a 10 or a, a nine or an 11, you know, maybe a little heavier, 11 would be good or not, 10 would be good. Nine would be too skinny, it might go out of tune. And, um, and so, then what you do is you tune that D up an octave, okay? So here's what it sounds like. You hear that? You hear how that D string is up? It's too high, right? Okay, now to give you some context, if I capo, if I capo, if I bar at the third, at the fifth fret, the top four strings, right there, that's the tuning for ukulele. My, let's see, my dog has fleas. My dog has fleas. Kathy, does your dog have fleas? Somebody has a dog up there. Somebody mentioned their dog. Kathy, that was you, right? Okay, so now the cool thing about that is that chords on top of that will have, uh, will be like if I do a, like this, this G7 chord uh, with this, here it is right here. I'm going to type it in. Uh, five, seven, six, seven. This is G7. Okay. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> Somebody said they had their dog was sleeping. Well, maybe that was Pepper. I'm losing track of people here. Um, but see, with that up, that string up an octave, 
it creates this tight voicing, which on piano is very easy to do tight voicings. Okay. But on guitar, generally tight voicings, you, you're doing this kind of thing to get that. Like on to be able to play that on a standard tune guitar, I'd have to do something like this. You know, I'd have to I'd have to play literally up here and down there. So that's not it's not it's not playable. So with that D string up an octave. So I was working on this session, and so so for example, um, let's look at let's look at the the caged shapes in the key of G. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> just using the G chord, we're gonna do all all um, uh, five shapes in G. So obviously the first one's G. Okay. And then after G, that's the last one. So we're uh, I'm sorry, after G, and then we go to E. Okay. So the E shape is here. Okay. So I generally, when I'm playing the African telly, I just play the top four strings. So again, I'm using the caged method to come up with voicings. So I was like... Creating some fun stuff, or it was like, uh, you know, kind of doing some some groovy kind of things, and also doing some picking things. So if I go to the next D shape, I'm, I'm sorry, the next uh, shape, which after e, uh, e is D, here's the D shape. So like I said, if I want to make that a seventh, take that down. Here's that G seven I wrote right there. Is the next shape here and that sounds it's a very african sound the like king sunny a day um was a big artist in africa and what i was doing on the track i think i was doing like it just made a happy sound this is a very happy sound and then the the next shape after the c shape is a caged so that would be the A shape there. So I was also doing this, but what I was doing with on that was I was more barring my finger here and kind of getting back up into that G shape up here. So it's just a really fun, fun tool. And I'm, you know, when I was playing it. I was using the caged method to come up with all the shapes up and down. Now I'm probably not thinking caged at the moment because I just know my shapes. At some point, you just know them. You don't have to think. Okay, caged. I have to go in order. I just you just you just learn them and you know them. Um, so again, there's a there's an application of the caged method in a rhythmic context. Okay. Um, so yesterday we did uh, the C form and we came up with in the in D. So we did the D chord in the C form and I showed you the scale, the pentatonic scale around that. Okay, so now I'm going to um, do, uh, let's do the, so after we did the C shape that we have A, so let's do the A shape, but let's stay in the key of D. So the A shape, here's A. All right. okay. I, can, I, can, I can leave a clean sound on this. Oh, this guitar is a lot louder. It's so funny. It's, I mean, it's got humbuckers. The other one's just single quotes. Uh, in fact, it's even distorting. Uh, so so um, if I go up here, I've got go up a fret, B flat, B, C, C sharp, and there's D. Okay, so we're still in D. What's the pentatonic scale over this? Okay, so if you have your guitar out, we're going to do the pentatonic, the major pentatonic in the key of D that goes over this chord. Okay. And if everybody can hear me okay. Um, so I, we're going to start with our second finger on the bottom string at the fifth fret. Okay. And then we're going to, so that's the first note. And that's not a D, that's not the root. So we're not going to start on the root. Okay. Um, so... Then we're gonna to go to the seventh fret with our pinky. So five, seven, all right? And then the next one, next string, same thing, five, seven. And the reason I'm using my second finger and my 
fourth finger for this is because I'm going to need my first finger here. So I'm basically assigning a, a, a fret per finger. Okay. So technically you would call this plane in fourth position because of the location of your first finger. Even though I'm starting on the fifth fret, this would not be called fifth position. This would be called fourth position. Um, and that's a, more of a classical term. If you study classical guitar, you would know that. Um, and um, so we have, so it's seven, or I'm sorry, five, seven, five, seven, and then four, seven, with your first and th fourth finger, four, seven again, and then five, seven, five, seven. Okay, sorry, I'm gonna go slower. Bottom string, start on the bottom, on the sixth string, five, seven with the pinky, okay? Next string, five, seven, there's my notepad, okay? The next string, the fourth string, we're gonna go four, seven. Next string, we're gonna go four, seven. And then second string, five, seven. And the next string, last string, first string, five, Seven, okay? So backwards, seven, five. Second string, seven, five. Next string, seven, four. Next string, seven, four. Next string, seven, five. Next string, seven, five. Now, some players might play it like this, where you kind of use your... When you're playing the seven, the five sevens, you use your first and second finger, and then move down. I mean, that's not that's not really wrong. Um, but the other thing is, I don't generally like hang out in that scale. That's not a scale. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna like shred, um, and I say that with a small s because I'm not a shred meister. Uh, but let me pull up. Uh, let me pull up a sound real quick. All right. Um, so if I were to shred, I would probably just go up to the next pentatonic scale, um, right here. So this is, and, and I call this pentatonic number five, because it's the fifth one starting, this is number one. Okay, that's number one. That's number one. And if you go up to two, three, four, five, here's number five right below number one, because there's five basic pentatonic shapes. Now, but that one I might see a lot of people use the bottom two of that, or the bottom two strings of this this one, and then go up to this one. It's called box playing. And then if you go up to the two up here, it's called finding the boxes, and they're all the same notes. Okay. Um, but it's three three different pentatonic scales. This one is from this one we just learned. And I'm going to write Pepper, was it you yesterday that took a screenshot? <laughs> Somebody took a screenshot. I'm going to I'm going to write it down right now for you guys so you can I'll hold it up and you can take a screenshot, okay? We're going to do that right now. And uh and then basically you go up to the you know take the bottom two notes on that. Uh let's see. Where's my pen? Except I don't have my pen. Where's my pen? Oh, here it is. Woo. Scared me for a second. Okay, so this one was at the second fret. Uh, yeah, this one's at the fifth. So I'm going to hold up a thing and you'll have both of them. So you can screenshot. If you, if you missed yesterday's, you can get yesterday's too. So here's, here's the, uh, again, I call this pentatonic number five, but that's just how I taught when I taught pentatonics. And we can talk about that later. We can do that another another time where I show you all five. I've got a, a way I teach that that I really like. Um, again, part of the reason I did started doing YouTube lessons was I had 35 years of pedagogy that I developed teaching guitar, private guitar lessons. And I'm like, I wasn't teaching them anymore. I'm like, that shouldn't go to waste. I should put it up on YouTube so people can use it. I didn't know that it would actually generate money. Okay, so so this is the, there you go, screenshot that. Oh, it's back. Is it backwards for you guys? You can flip it over though. <laughs> I try. That. I'm not a diva. No, I actually, 
I can tell you a story later. I, I actually, when I'm in the studio with everybody, I'm always the one like, hey, can I get you guys coffee or whatever? And they're like, no, we got people to do that. And I'm like, well, do they need coffee? <laughs> so at one point, someone asked one of the producers I was working with, they asked, somebody said, hey, hey, who's the nicest guy in the room? And and uh, the, one of the uh, second engineers, you know, the, like the, the grunts, the guys that are emptying the trash cans and setting up mics and going to get food and stuff like that. He goes, well, Straley. And they go, no, no, besides Straley, like it was a foregone conclusion. <laughs> and I was like, oh, gee, I got a reputation. It's a good reputation. But uh, anyway, so, uh, yeah, you can always rewrite that. But you can also just if you do a screenshot, you can always just in, in your uh, in your JPEG reader or P ping reader you can flip it it's not not difficult so i mean i think it's well to me it looks flipped and so and it, so maybe i think you're you can even flip my screen right because I, I look left-handed or right-handed to you i i don't i don't know i mean I'm, it's like looking in a mirror for me so um okay now uh let's see so that shape though, I, you know, I can, I can zoom around on it. I'm probably more likely to use the diatonic scale in it. And that's the diatonic scale that's inside that pentatonic scale. And we'll talk about that. I'm just, I wanna get the five pentatonics in the next five days so that you have those uh, to work with. And again, I, this video will be up there. All, the, all the, the live chat stuff will be up there so you can review this. Um, and then I have videos on this. Uh, I meant to open up my Safari and go grab some of those things, but um, okay. So, um, so let's, let's play. Um, let's play that pentatonic again. If you got guitar in your hand, let's do that pentatonic again. I'm going to go to the clean sound again, just because it's just too crazy. Yeah, not bad. Okay. So we're going to start with our, and I, go ahead and finger it the way I'm going to do it. I know it's harder, but you might as well do something harder and get it down. And then you can always shift to doing these two figures. Now, if I were doing the box shape thing where I was just going to do just two, uh, four notes from this scale, yeah, I would only use my first and second, or third finger for that. Okay. Is that, you know what I'm saying? So if I was just going to play the scale up and down because I want to practice the scale, again, this is not a scale I would sit here doing this probably very much, although it's always good to get them all under your fingers. Um, but if I was only going to play this much of it and then slide up and do the same thing up here on pentatonic number one, again, don't worry. I'm, I know I'm going really fast, but I'm not, I'm not expecting you to know this part of it but then I might only use those two fingers, okay? So I might finger it easier. But for now, since we're just playing this pentatonic shape um, that fits, again, this is the pentatonic shape over the, the A shape of the D chord. So this is an A. So we're using the caged method. We're in the A of the caged method and we're at the fifth fret, which is D, but you don't have to be able to play this to be able to play the scale. So second finger on the fifth fret of the sixth string, then pinky on the seventh, Next string, a second finger on the fifth, pinky on the seventh. Now we're going to use our first finger on the fourth fret of the fourth string, then the seventh fret of the fourth string, and then the fourth fret of the third string, seventh fret, and then second string, fifth fret with a second string finger. Okay. Pinky on the seventh fret, and then second finger on the top string at the fifth fret and then pinky, okay? Then we're gonna go, we're gonna go backwards, okay? So pinky, seventh fret, five, now the second string, seven, five, okay? Then, uh, pinky, hey Dave, uh, pinky on the seventh fret on the third string. Oh, we're getting, I'm getting grainy. I know that they're gonna be uh, lowering the, um, uh, lowering the resolution on all, you know, like all streaming services is going to be lowering resolution uh, because everybody's home and everybody's watching stuff, but also people are working from home and they need, when I was trying to upload files last night, it took forever. And I'm like, yeah, cause ever I would, I did it like at nine o'clock last night and it just took forever because everybody is watching Netflix. So, okay. Okay. Now we're at, at the seventh fret of the uh, fourth string. And then the fourth fret, 
first finger there on the fourth string, then seven, five on the fifth, and seven, five on the sixth. Okay, let's go again. Five, seven, five, seven, four, seven, four, seven, five, seven. I mean, half of the scale is just all, all six of these notes right here, the seventh fret, okay? Which is half of the notes in the main, the number one uh, power, or number one pentatonic shape that everybody learns the first time. You know what I do? I, I When I'm feeling blue or sick or whatever, I watch uh, Cheers. <laughs> I binge watch Cheers. So I love that show. It's still funny. I don't know how they, uh, you know, so many shows that are, that old or older, just, you know, very few of them are still funny. I think Lucille, I love Lucy is still funny, but anyway, I don't know if that's anywhere. Um, and I think I've seen every Lucille, or I love Lucy episode a thousand times. So, okay. So there's that. All right. So we're at, we're at 30 minutes. So now I'm just going to chill. We're going to talk. I said, so, oh, I know. Oh, check this out. So yesterday, I'm going to get a different guitar. Uh, or day before yesterday. I created a new jam, a new bluegrass jam track because one of the things I noticed was that my stupid jam track in G, you know, at 100 beats per minute had like 70,000 views. I don't know. It has a lot of views. And I'm like, well, okay, there's a need for this. So I did a few, few weeks ago, I did another one, um, uh, same key of G, but at 120 beats per minute. Okay. So I did that and I uploaded it and I immediately posted it. Cause it was like, Oh, okay. And, up, and uh, there's, there's like three chord shapes in there and there's a little scale. So you can kind of be looking at that, but it's 10 minutes long. So you can practice. You, know, uh, you can practice your bluegrass licks or anything, whatever you want to practice. I mean, practice your harmonica, I, whatever it's, 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 uh, you know, doesn't matter what instrument you play on over it. So, um, and somebody commented that it's not bluegrass because there's drums on it. I got, I, you know, I didn't think about that. I call it bluegrass. I put it in quotes um, and uh, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, I put the song, I put the song up and immediately made it public because I just thought, Oh no. Well, uh, YouTube demonetized it. And I'm like, wait, why? And they said, that, Oh, because it's these two songs. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I had a problem with that. First off, if it's copyright infringing two songs, then aren't those two songs copyright infringing each other? How can I copyright two infringe two songs at the same time? And it was literally, I recorded it that day. It was a drum loop. So it was like a brush, you know, like a four bar drum loop. And the bass was an upright that I played on the piano, you know, on the keyboard. Um, it was an upright sample, but I played it and wrote it myself, even though it was just, you know, basically. <laughs> basically that so yeah that's the, you can't copyright that and then it was me strumming and I intentionally even did two guitars so I did a left one and a right one and I played them like I did I did the progression I didn't play it for 10 minutes I played it for like two minutes and then looped it and the other one I played for like three minutes and looped it so they wouldn't so there would you you would never hear the two guitars sound the same at any one point um yeah right I heard that too <laughs> and uh so I you know, I disputed it. And you're, you, when you dispute, you're running the risk of getting a strike against you. And if you get three strikes against you, they'll take down your channel. But I had to dispute both of those. And I literally wrote a thing saying, look, there's no words on here. There's no melodies. It's just a jam track that I literally created today, recorded, played, wrote, you know, mixed, uploaded all today in the same day. It's, you know, and one of the songs was from the fifties and another song was from the sixties that was a supposedly copyright infringing. I'm like, you cannot copyright a basic bluegrass, you know, one, four or five progression. It's just not, you know, so it was like, Oh my gosh. So it took them 30 days and it may take it. They say they'll do it in 30 days. Um, it, it took them 30 days to take away the restriction. Well, of course, in the meantime, it was, People were using it and I'm thrilled with that, but I wasn't getting any money from that first month. Um, and I've made, I think, $2 of it from it since. Um, but, you know, in my head, I've always been one of those annuity guys. I mean, when I was seven years old, I saved up enough money to buy a savings bond <laughs> that, that I literally just cashed this year. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about that thing. <laughs> so like, but it was, you know, it was, you know, it was crazy. So 
Um, and I think I paid $17 for it and I cashed it out at $27, like 50 years later. <laughs> so anyway, that's a different, that's a whole nother thing. But, but in my head, you know, Hey, $2 for six months, that's great because it's just one video. If it makes me $4 a year, you have enough videos up there to generate some revenue. So, so I did another one yesterday or two days ago in D. So it's the same progression. I went to back down to 100 beats per minute. So I don't have any strikes against me, just so you know. So they 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 agreed with me on that on my, my complaint. So I uploaded that one. Same thing happened immediately. Now, this time I was smart. I didn't post it immediately. Uh, I'd like to say that that was forethought on my point. I just didn't want to post it immediately. I, I set it for 48 hours later or something like that. And I'll be darned if I didn't get two copyright infringement strikes on on. You know, and I, like I said, I had two guitars. So one guitar is doing that, and the other one's kind of going, you know, I'm like doing the different. I'm being maybe a little bit different playing on. So, so it's like I'm trying not to trigger those copyright things because I've literally got left and right and the bass and drums and everything, you know. And so there, so I disputed both. So hopefully I win both. I, the, the thing was, the song that they said it was, was something like Santa Drives a Dually or something. And I'm like, what? you never heard of that song? I looked it up. And see, that's the drag. On the infringement notice, they don't put links to the videos that they're claiming. They just put the names of it. So you have to look it up. Well, I look it up. And there's 10, vers 10 people have uploaded the exact same song up. I'm like, well, how come they're not getting copyright infringements? Because they're actually literally uploading the same song just from their record or uh, MP3 or something. I mean, I... I don't, I've never even heard of the song and it wasn't even a bluegrass song. It was Zydeco. So there's like, <laughs> there's like accordion and all this. Uh, so anyway, so I said yesterday that I was, I was going to have a jam track uploading in the next day or so. And so I lied yesterday. <laughs> so I'm a liar. Uh, yeah. Santa drives a dually. A dually is one of those pickup trucks that has the four tires in the back. <laughs> I think that's what it was called. Something like that. It was really stupid. I'm like, Oh my gosh. And the other one was a French one. And I'm like, and maybe it was French for Santa drives a dually. I don't know. I don't know French well enough to know. Uh, uh, Kathy would know. Uh, I should, I should look it up again. Uh, well, hold on. Let's see if, if that's still up there. Hold on. Cause I'm, I'm sure that it hasn't been approved yet because it took them 29 days back when they were fully staffed. Now they're even, you know, less. So here's, let's see, I'm going to my videos. I go to my jam thing. Okay. So it says copyright claim. Yep. Escrow claim ad revenue is being held during dispute. Yep. Okay. So let me, let me click on it and see where, if, okay. Where is the claim? View copyright claim. Okay. I'll see if I can. Um, okay. I'm going to copy. Kathy, I know you speak French. I think this is French, right? You tell me. Here it is. It even rhymes with dually. <laughs> so I'm like, but I don't think they have duallys in France. <laughs> I just never, I mean, I've been to France a few times and I've never seen a dually, but I wasn't looking for them. So what the hell, you know? So that's, um, is that what it says? Santa drives a dually? Oh, I know. Oh, it's French. Yeah. So what does it say? Translate it. The of the the windows of the oh, the widows of. OK, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, coolie. <laughs> Coolie, yeah. Translate Cooley. My wife speaks French, though, actually, so I could have asked her. The widows of something. Um, so the um, so anyway, it may take a while for that one to go up. I don't know what I'm going to do. I really, I, I, it's for me doing those uh, jam tracks are pretty darn easy. You know, it's not doesn't take me that long. I mean, okay, for two dollars, it's not worth my time, clearly, uh, but. I've made on the other one that's so popular, I think it was over $200 over the, the years that it's been up there. So um, there's definitely, that was definitely worth my time to make $200 for, 
you know, playing, mixing, editing, all that stuff, and then uploading and doing the iMovie. That's what I use basically for my video editing. I don't have anything better than that. Um, yeah, hard to translate coolly. Is it a region or something? The widows of a, of you know Versailles kind of thing. So flowing. <laughs> the widows of the flowing. Oh no. <laughs> The, widow, the widows who ha are being visited by Aunt Flo. That's just not... See, I, I would never write that song. Why am I getting claimed copyright right infringement? Small, small stream. Okay. Okay. Widows of the small stream. That, that still doesn't... That still just sounds sketchy to me. I, I don't know. But uh, you, can look, you can look it up and see if you've ever heard the song. But I'd never heard the song. I clearly didn't copyright it. Or, I mean, I didn't, I didn't copy it. So... Uh, yeah, so that's a little frustrating. I apologize. You know, I told you I was going to have another jam track up there. But um, the G1 is up there in, in two different tempos, 100 and 120. And there's a lot of jam tracks up there. If you, I know some of you uh, were doing my uh, in, intro to improvisation things that I was doing, which I haven't done one in a while. And those all came with jam tracks. So you don't, you can, do, and, and those jam tracks didn't get infringements, which is weird. Because those were all MIDI. I mean, I just did keyboards. I didn't even play guitar on them. So I would think that, and it was just loops. I mean, I just played some chords. But I did try to move the chord around a little bit. So it was a little interesting. Might make it harder to copyright that. So, Oh, interesting. So one E is river and two E's is string. Yeah, I wonder if that, I was thinking that too, because uh, of course, it, you know, and that, the copyright, and then, well, let me look up that other name. What was the other name? Santa Drove a Dooley. Yeah, <laughs> literally, that's the title of the other song. I've never heard that song before. So here, I'll put that, put that up there. I'm like, what the heck, Pace? Santa Drove a Dooley. Uh, like, and it was like a, the version that I found, the first one that came up, I just clicked on it. It was, it was Zydeco. I'm like, I mean, you know, maybe it's a, another one of those Christmas songs, but there's so, and there's so many of those, but gosh, you know. Oh, Deep Ravine or Gulch. Okay, well, that may make, yeah, that would, the Widows of the, so. Um, so anyway, um, I will continue tomorrow, hopefully. Um and uh, we will we will do more of the caged method. Um, but I again, I'll try to keep it simple um, and I'll keep this paper handy so I can write out. In fact, I'd probably pre write out the next one and I'll keep them all right there so we can you can you can do a screenshot if you missed them. Um, so uh, that's that's where we're at. And I uh, hope you're all doing well. I didn't sleep at all last night. Just I'm exhausted. Um, just thinking about a lot of things and, and, uh, just kind of, kind of stressful time, especially for, you know, people in my business, cause the tours are all canceled. Nobody can play live. So there are a lot of musicians that are completely devastated by this and it's, it's really, really tough. So, um, I certainly would, um, consider, you know, uh, you know, watching some YouTube videos of some local musicians in your area or whatever, anything you can do. Um, I am going to do, um, a another stage it show if you are a musician you check out stage it because you can do we're doing we're going to do a living room another living room concert just kelly and i so kelly jekyll's this girl that i write with and she was in the movie pitch perfect if you saw that she was in all three of them she was uh, in the main group but she didn't have any dialogue but she did most of the singing on it so like if the most you know a lot of times even the competing singing groups she's singing their parts some of the parts. So yeah, it's just brutal. It's just brutal. Um, so we just need to, in the, in the drag, here's the thing. When, when this finally is over, we need to go back and start spending money. And that's, just going to be really hard to do. People are not going to want to go to movies, even, even when they said, Oh, it's, we're good now. Or everybody gets vaccinated. If they have that, it's going to be, it's going to be tough. So um, I, I do feel fortunate that I'm, I very uh, blessed to have, um, a career that I can kind of do from home, but even my career, even my work that I'm going to be doing, um, they've stopped production on so many movies and TV shows that 
eventually the composers I work for are going to kind of catch up with the workflow. And once they stop working, I stop working. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, they're going to start. Yeah, the movie theater, uh, the movie studios, I think, are going to start doing things online and you can charge online to see the latest James Bond movie or whatever when that's coming out. But yeah, that doesn't that only helps Universal or the, the movie theater company. It doesn't really help anybody else. Um, and so that's yeah. So we're you know, one of the things we have to do is once the dust settles, we need to get back out. And, you know, you can still eat. You know, we can still because in California, we last night at midnight, they said, you know, don't leave your house except for. Um, you know, necessary stuff. Well, getting food is necessary and, and technically going to a restaurant. Uh, but my son, Alex, he lost all of his work as a guitar player. And so he actually just signed up for Postmates. Poor kid. Um, he's really bummed because, uh, and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not making a statement about, <laughs> this is not a man feel, but men and women are different. And I, one of the things that guys, I, you know, generally they define themselves by what they do. And my son is a guitar player and he he's always thought of himself. He's been a guitar player since he was seven. He's been playing since he was one. I kid you not. Um, and uh, he uh, he's a great guitar player and he does a lot of live work and he does some session work, too. But basically, you know, most of the session work he does is in studios with other musicians where I work from home. So he's kind of been, his work is completely dried up. He also does a social media for Voodoo Lab. So they're still using them, but hopefully that won't, that won't uh, dry up. Um, so if you uh, follow Voodoo Lab pedals on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, or any of those formats, it's, he's doing the, 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 that stuff for that. So that's definitely something he can do online. Um, and people are still putting together pedal boards and ordering stuff. I saw Amazon's one of the few stocks that's actually been up the last week. Um, and that completely makes sense because A, they have Amazon Prime. Um, and the other thing is that people are ordering. I just, I've got something coming tomorrow, some stuff coming tomorrow. So not food. Although I, after I ordered stuff, I was like, dang it, I should have ordered like at least a box of, you know, uh, protein bars or something like that, just to kind of stockpile some things, but not go crazy and order things that other people need. We're good with toilet paper. <laughs> so uh, I told my wife like four weeks ago, you might want to get a big pack of toilet paper. I saw this coming and, uh, and she did. I wish I had liquidated my portfolios. Uh, I didn't, I probably would have seen that coming, but it's just not my nature to, to sell stocks. I, I'm a buyer and a holder and, and I pay for that sometimes. I've, I've been in the market so long, I paid for it multiple times and it's come back roaring every time. So we'll see what happens this time. Um, I do think that um, on this subject, I do think that three things are going to happen next week. There's going to be a national stay at home policy like we have in California. Uh, stay in place, I think they call it. Um, they're also going to stop flights, they're not going to flights anymore. My daughter moved her flight from Tuesday to tomorrow to go home back to Ozark Christian College. Uh, and she's going to have to quarantine for seven days at home because she's coming from California where they have a lot more cases than they do in Missouri. So when she gets there, she's going to have to quarantine. Um, and then um, the other thing they're going to do, I think they're going to shut down the stock market. I think they'll close it. They closed it for, I think, seven days, like a week and almost a half uh, after 9-11. But that was mainly because the stock exchange was there were it was the the uh, World Trade Centers were right there. And it was just like very dangerous there and they couldn't go there. So. Um, uh, um, Oh, if they print the watch. <laughs> wow, Gary. Uh, comic relief over here. I, I always count on you, Gary. Um, now, Gary, where are you? Where are you located? <laughs> yeah, literally changed my shirt one minute before I hit I end stream. I could see myself and I was like, I was taking the picture and I went, oh, no. <laughs> So I changed. Oh, Gary, you're in Wisconsin. Okay. I've got friends in Wisconsin. A lot of friends in Wisconsin. So I've, yeah, I've been there a few times. Been to Madison. Did a, did a gig there with my, back when I was in Butler. I was playing Butler Big Band, Butler University Big Band. So I played there. Um, so anyway, I think there's going to be some big, major, major changes next week. Um, in some ways, it's like, uh, it feels like everybody's taking a forced vacation. The problem is most people haven't saved expecting something like this and most people so many people live uh yeah i have a friend that lives up in the, uh, brad ray lives up in the north woods so 
million lakes up there, like Minnesota too. I used to spend a lot of time in Michigan, it's a gorgeous state. But um, yeah, so many people are month to month. Uh, there is going to be some people are getting checks. Um, if you qualify, if you make below a certain amount of money, you'll you'll be getting checks from the feds. Uh, they're trying to figure out how they're going to do that. I'm sure you're. I'm sure you're all up on all this stuff. Um, the uh, these are vid this video. I hope this video is very weird to watch a year from now. I hope a year from now we go back and if you watch this video, you're like, oh yeah, I remember that it was boy. That was a weird month. I'm hoping it's all you know. We're we're looking at just a month, but we the main thing, the main reason they're going to such draconian measures here in California and New York. New York's got a lot of cases now. Um, is because the hospitals cannot handle if everybody gets sick, if, if even 2% of the population got sick enough to go to the hospital at the same time, they can't handle it. Um, and so that's what they're trying to prevent. So if we can just, you know, the, the thing is, the, what, the, you know, they're thinking is if we can just spread this out so that people get it over a period of eight, nine months instead of in two months, um, we can maybe get through this. Uh, but that sounds depressing because that means eight, nine months of what we're doing, and that's not sustainable. So, um, um, yeah, you know, and that's the other thing. I mean, now's the time to learn another language. Um, you know, the great thing you got YouTube, as long as you have internet, it's free. And, and the people you're watching make a little bit of money. Like I said, I think it's, if you look at the view count, if you look at the views, um, my experience is that you get basically anywhere from a one twentieth, or sorry, one fifth to um, <clears throat> to one third of a penny per view, okay? So um, say it's one third, so that means if you get three views, that's a penny. If you get 30 views, that's 10 cents. If you get 300 views, that's a dollar um, and so on and so forth. So you can see where if you get in the millions of views, you're making some real money. And some people, you know, get millions of views a day. Um, so, you know, it, you're, you're getting something for free basically. Um, and, and then the people that put up the content are also getting something and gosh, I can't believe, was it, was it you, uh, uh, where's <laughs> good seafood? Yeah. Right. You go, you go fishing in the lake. Was it you, Kathy, that said I had, what was it? 400 and you, you looked it up right away. Somebody looked it up right away. 400, oh, Kathy, yeah, 468 videos I have up. I don't know why I can't see that number. I'm like, where, where is that number? I'm, all, the, all the analytics I have, the, YouTube is great with analytics. Um, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. I, my, uh, uh, like, I'll share some of the an analytic data because I think it's, I think it's pretty, pretty funny. Um, so, <laughs> <clears throat> I, I'm shocked, but if I look at my audience, um, so 11.7% of my audience is female. But when I do these live streams, it seems like it's higher than that, uh, which is funny. But 11% actually for guitar and YouTube, which both of those things are kind of a, uh, generally a male-dominated fields. Um, I think there are more, uh, YouTube, I think YouTube... Um, is the viewer in general, uh, you know, it's like over 50% male in general. And then of course, guitar is generally a male thing. Yeah. 4, 468. That's crazy. Um, but 11.7% and that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> so I, uh, um, and then uh, my largest demographic age wise is of course my demographic 55 to 64, but that's only 21%. Um, I'm shocked that 9% of my viewers are 18 to 24, 16% uh, are um, 25 to 34. So I, you know, it's, it's almost pretty flat line there. 47% um, of my viewers are uh, from the U S naturally. Most of my top five are all English speaking countries, Canada, Australia, England. Um, there's one more there. And let's, let's, well, Germany. Yeah. So U S is number one. United UK, Canada, Australia, and Germany. Um, and Germany is only 2% of my subscribers, but it's really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm stoked that 47 are US. That means that 53% of my viewers 
are over or out of the country, which is really, really cool. Um, one of the things I thought about doing too, at some point is maybe having my videos, having some of my more popular videos translated to, uh, cause I think I can pay like a little bit of money and somebody will do the, the translation underneath. Um, and, uh, uh, like do my most popular videos that way, maybe pay, you know, a few bucks to have that done in like Spanish and maybe German Portuguese. Those would be three biggies and in Chinese too. So, um, at age 70. Okay. So the, the, at that point they go, it's just 65 or plus and it's 20%. So that's also pretty impressive that, you know, that kind of flies in the face of, Oh, people over 70 aren't, aren't tech savvy. It's like, yeah, it's not my experience. Um, it's, if you want to do something really cool, go to my, my seven tips for older beginners and read some of those comments. It is the most awesome thing. And that vid, that video I, is one of my few videos that I do not have my comments set for pre-approval. OK, I, I don't have to approve those. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I um, uh, I so all those comments are just flying. Every other video I do, pretty much I set I have to approve them. So anyone who's going to be really nasty and negative, they just don't even bother because they know I'm not going to approve it. Um, and in fact, I've gotten some weird comments or some nasty ones or spam like ones, and I just block them. And I'm not sure what happens if I block you, if you just can't see my channel at all, or if you can't, if it just won't let you make comments. Um, but, uh, it's, you know, there's some people that are just, just super negative or they just, or they're just trolling, you know, um, you know, like with working with Justin Bieber, that, that kind of gives you automatically gives you a bunch of enemies, <laughs> people that either just hate Justin or people that um, uh, uh, that are jealous that I get to work with them. So both those those that group of people, they're they're going to kind of say some nasty things sometimes. Um, and working and knowing Justin for as long as I have, and and you know being around him, I've seen all the negative stuff. And you, literally ninety nine percent of the negative comments on like Twitter, for example, or on on YouTube. All it is, is it's they're trolling the fans, particularly the fan girls. It's 15 year old boys trolling the fan girls, trying to just make them cry or something. They're, they have no expectation that Justin's ever going to read their comments or, or let alone reply to them. And like I've said in the past, I oftentimes if I get a really bad comment, uh, my, my number one response, if you don't like my video, I'm, I just say, hey, thank God there are a lot, of, a lot better teachers on YouTube for you to find than me. So um, I try to, you know, at least take responsibility for, for their displeasure. And um, yeah, uh, you'd be, be shocked, but D Bieber definitely still has fangirls. Uh, but uh, now most of them are in the mid twenties or late twenties. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> uh, so um, this is, does it, what, uh, what, does the thumbnail have a blue C? What is that? Well, and here's the other thing. When I, so I, I remember I told you that it was, I got one comment <laughs> that um, somebody said, I had longer hair. So if you pull up the caged method videos, uh, I can, I can find that again. So that I should post that every time. So you guys can have it here. Um, but, but if you look at those videos, I mean, they're pretty old and I had longer hair and one, somebody commented on, on one of those that uh, they said, I didn't know um, Kathy Bates played guitar. <laughs> and I just, I approved the comment as fast as I could. And I said, I commented back. I just typed in, I said, that's the funniest comment I've ever seen. And the guy commented back and said, oh, no, dude, I really like your channel. I really like your content. Keep it up. I, it wasn't, it wasn't a meant as a dig. Um, oh wait, I got a couple. Okay, music theory in the cage. So uh, this is this is uh, this has some beginner stuff on it too. So uh, this playlist you can check out. Um, it has a lot of the cage stuff on it. Um, sorry, um, here we go. Oh, and my high count. Yes. So I don't think I got anywhere near thirty nine today. I think it was thirty two the first day, thirty seven yesterday. Uh, I twenty nine is the highest I've seen today. But here's the playlist um, for the um for the caged method lessons i did a while ago also i've got there's 13 videos here i think is it 13 uh yeah 13 videos i'm going to uh copy and paste this this is caged quick 
riffs. So these are just short little riffs. I think I did one per video. It's been a while, so I don't really remember. But these are great. So like I said, the... Um, So I, um, like I said, when I, um, uh, when I'm seeing, when I'm playing solo and I'm thinking about the cage shapes, like for example, if I'm playing, you know, over D and I play, I, I'm visual, I'm in, I'm in the position here for the A form. You know, there's certain licks that I'm just going to naturally, going to gravitate, um, that are right there in that. And so what I did was I did a series of videos where I think I just did one lick per video. And it was like, here's a video, here's a lick with using the D shape. And it's to kind of give you an idea how the shape can inspire you just messing around in the shape. You can find scale, you know, without even learning all the scales, you can start to find licks and um, blues licks and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of why I started doing it. So, um, Good. Well, Verdi, we're going to get to all five of them, okay? I'll stick to the guns here, um, and I'll, we've done two so far. And usually I start on pentatonic number one, but this time, because I was the way I was teaching it, we started at pentatonic number three. But again, there's that's not a universal term. That's that's a Tom Straley term. So if you say, hey, play pentatonic number one or number three, that everybody look at you like, what the hell are you talking about? Because <laughs> there is no such thing. So uh, that's just me. When I would teach it, I would I would do that. So uh, what I may do when I've done five of these, uh, I may go and then do the show you the chain link fence thing that where you can see them all laid out. And I'll I'll create I'll write it out on paper and then hold it up. You can do a screenshot of that as well. OK. Um. <laughs> well, you know, God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is therapeutic for me. I love talking and I got other than my wife, <laughs> I got no one to talk to. Um, and she's out of work. She's a school teacher and a substitute teacher. So she she's not she doesn't have any income right now. So that's not helping. So you guys watching, if you're preppers, <laughs> if you're if you're <coughs> going crazy prepping <clears throat> and going to Amazon, you know, go to any one of my YouTube uh, pages and you can click on the Amazon links there. And anything you buy from that point on, I get a percentage of. Um, I get real money, sometimes as much as a hundred a month from all those Amazon links from you guys, from all you buying stuff. So, you know, feel free to do that. Um, the other thing you can do is you can go to Amazon, go to the bottom of the page and create your own Amazon affiliate account. Uh, I'm not sure I've mine. I've done, had for so long um, that, um, uh, that I don't even remember, you know, remember if there were any kind of restrictions or if you had to have a business or whatever, but basically that's, um, kind of what um, I'm, you know, I've done. So uh, I've been doing it for so long. So, it, you know, some, some months it's a, you know, $10 and some, some months it's $50. So, uh, but anything you buy from that point on, uh, when you click through the link, um, I make something. So you don't have to buy what, what the link is. So if it's a guitar pick or a guitar string or, you know, a pedal or something like that, you do not have to, um, uh, you don't have to buy that. So, um <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> we'll be like, oh yeah, whatever Tom's the deal Tom's really got, give us that. So, but yeah, you know, you can do that. And, um, but if not just shop through mine, create your own so you can get money back. Uh, but if not, you know, happily shop through mine. Uh, but my wife may be getting some work as a nanny or something like that because she is certified as a teacher. Um, and we homeschooled all three of our kids all the way through high school. So, so many people have to go to work and their kids can't go to school. So they're definitely uh, in need of home care. So we may be doing some of that. Um, get out of town. You found my, Elise, you, where are you from, Elise? Bertrand, Bertrand, Elise Bertrand. That sounds, I don't know, that sounds like a, sounds like you're, Elise, Elise, Elise. Is that French? I don't know. It's just, uh, Bertrand, Bertrand, yeah, Bertrand could be French. You tell me where you are. But anyway, yeah, it's, uh, I've okay, got, let's see. Oh, you retract, oh, you retract, your, okay. Let's see. Uh, my wife is teacher's aide. And my son's a third grade. Yeah, it's brutal. Schools are shut down here. So uh, now here's one thing. My wife is fairly adept at Google Classroom. 
Uh, she kind of got good at it because she needed it. And they're doing a lot of teachers are having to do that and they're not familiar with it. So she's made herself available to the three districts that she works for uh, to help coach that. So that actually may pay more than subbing because she, then she'd be kind of in the more tech realm. Um, and that way they can kind of keep the kids in school. Uh, my daughter's at college. My son's at college. And they both um, are going to be doing online for the rest of the year. My daughter's at Ozark Christian College in Missouri. Flies back tomorrow, sadly. And my son is at USC in Los Angeles. Um, and he is um, uh, just about just about done. Um, he's almost done. So, see, I got more here. Wait. Um, yeah, that, that appreciate. It. Yeah, you guys don't need to give me money. I mean, you can you can pay money. That's crazy. There's a little button here that says send. Show your support. I mean, I've had people give me like five bucks or something, but you don't need to do that. I think everybody here everybody here needs to be watching their pennies. So uh, if I get really skinny and I have not been hungry, just not hungry. Uh, one of the ways I deal with stress and I've needed to lose weight anyway, so I'm not, I'm kind of embracing it, but. Um, there you go. So, okay, listen, I got to sign off. This is a lot longer than I wanted to go, but you, it's just so fun to hang out. Oh, okay. You're not French. Yeah. See, I I'm, I'm a quarter French. My, um, my grandfather was from, uh, his parents were from Alsace Laurent, basically, uh, but his last name is Engel. So uh, it was actually a German, um, but in Alsace Laurent, I think that a lot of people speak German as well as French. So that's on the very, it's on the German border, Austrian border. It's, uh, what's the big city there? I can't think of it right now. Always wanted to go. I don't know when that's gonna happen. But anyway, you guys take care, be safe. Um, this is just beginning as far as like hanging out, uh, you know, staying put, that's going to, it's, it's almost fun for the first few days, but it's going to get tough. Um, take lots of walks, stay in shape. Once the weather starts getting warmer, that definitely affects flu viruses. It makes it, uh, harder to transfer. Um, and so, uh, hopefully we're cold here still. That's part of the problem in LA. It's still cold. Um, so Good. You're blazing through that fifth shape. I think a boss. Awesome. Well, it's great to see you guys tomorrow, Saturday at 11. Okay. I'll see you at 11 my time Pacific time. That's uh, two o'clock on East coast. And that would be seven in Britain. And I apologize to my Australian viewers. This is probably not the best time for them. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. I'm going to leave uh, the uh, chat for a minute. Okay. So you guys can chat.